you guys welcome back to my channel um, I'm excited to be filming today's video I'm just gonna be doing my everyday makeup look uh, it's pretty quick and easy um, I would say you know it takes me like 10 15 minutes on an everyday basis um, I sort of like to wear this look just when I'm like getting ready for work I feel like it looks sort of like put together without being too much um, but yeah, sometimes I like to go a little bit like smokier on the eye and have more fun with my eye makeup on the weekends, but definitely for work I sort of like to keep it a little bit simpler. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is pin back my hair a little bit, so I'm just going to put this headband on so my hair is out of my face. Okay, and I typically don't use primer. I'm not a big primer person. I feel like it's just one extra step, and I haven't found one that I really, really like yet. So um, I've just moisturized my face, and that pretty much like acts as a primer for me. So first thing I'm going to do is just go in with my foundation. I use the Makeup Forever um, HD foundation, and it's in Y365. That's my shade. Which it's a little dark for me right now because I am super pale. I have not used self tanner in probably like four or five months, so because my skin is really dry right now. And then the other thing I like to do is add a little bit of the Josie Marin Argan Oil just to make it like extra dewy and really hydrated since I do have such dry skin. So I just add like two drops of that and I just keep a little one at my makeup desk. I have a big one that I use pretty much every night before I go to bed. And then just sort of swirl it around. I'm just going to tap it all over my face. I, I really like this foundation. I think it's actually a good one for pretty much all skin types. Um, it's not going to be like overly dewy if you have oily skin and then it's not going to dry you out if you're dry. So it's just sort of like a good universal foundation. So I just take the excess and I just sort of like blend that down on my neck so that everything sort of blends together and there's no like line where my foundation ends. And then I'm just going to blend out my foundation. I'm using the Morphe 439. For like a year I was kind of like on the hunt for the best foundation brush. <laughs> this is probably my favorite one that I've tried. I like this one and then I also like that big like Tarte Kabuki like fat brush. I like that one too. I like like a bigger brush because I feel like A, it kind of like shears out the foundation a little bit more because I don't like a super like full coverage like really intense a lot of foundation look so um, I like the bigger brushes because they just sort of make it look more natural and they get the job done really really quick so this is a really good brush. It's a good size. And sorry if I'm looking down, I have a mirror down here, so that's why. I just want to make sure everything's like blended out. You can see it might be a little bit dark. I don't know how it's um, going to look on camera, but it might be a little bit darker than my neck. I'm looking at it in person, and it kind of looks a little dark. But once we put our lighter concealer on, it sort of um, evens everything out. Okay. So next concealer I'm going to use is the Tarte Shape Tape and Light Sand. I'm sure you've heard everybody raving about this concealer and it's really good. I just got it um, a couple months ago and I immediately became obsessed. And I just put this under my eyes just to sort of brighten everything up. I really like that super like highlighted under eye area. I don't know if that's like going out of style but I really like it still. And then I'm just going to blend that out with a damp beauty blender. And one thing you might notice is I do bring it up on my eyes. Um, I do that just because I don't want to like have to do the extra step of priming my eyes before putting a shadow on so this just like evens out everything on my lid and looks really nice. Okay, so to set my under eye area, I, I don't really like bake my under eye area. I just use this Laura Mercier translucent powder and I just use like a little bit and tap it under my eyes and it pretty much just like soaks right in. 
Um, and I use a beauty blender to do that. So I just tap a little bit onto my beauty blender and then I just sort of like push it in um, so that it sets that concealer. And like I said, I don't really like bake it. I just kind of like push a small amount into my skin and then it sort of just immediately soaks in and sets that concealer. Okay, next step is my favorite part, which is contouring slash bronzing, and we're gonna use my favorite bronzer of all time, which is the Hourglass um, Radiant Bronze Light in, oh no, that's the shade. It's like the ambient lighting bronzer. So it's a little bit expensive. Um, you could definitely find ones, I'm sure, at the drugstore that are pretty comparable, but I just I absolutely love this bronzer. It's lasted me so long. Like I've had this for probably almost two years, and it looks like I haven't even like made a dent. So it is a lot of money up front, but it's definitely worth it because then like I've had this for two years, so you definitely get your money's worth. And then I'm just using a Sigma Small Contour F05. I really like this brush for like bronzing, contouring. I feel like it kind of just gets the job done really quick and everything's like nice and sharp. So I'm just gonna suck in my cheeks and contour. See, like I feel like that blended it out really quickly. I really like this brush. And this bronzer does have um, a little bit of like a sheen to it. It doesn't have shimmer. It's just like kind of, um, I don't know, I guess like luminous. But I honestly prefer that look. I like, you know, since I have dry skin, I always like to look super, super glowy. So it's not going to look like chalky though when you apply it. I know that's like what a lot of people say about bronzers that have like shimmer or a sheen. Um, but I haven't found that to be an issue, or at least I don't think it's an issue. And then I just put a little bit on my nose. I don't really like contour, I just add a little bronzer on my nose, because whenever I have a real tan, my nose is usually a little bit more bronzed, so I feel like that sort of makes it look like it's more of like a natural bronze. Okay, and then this is going to sound really high maintenance, <laughs> um, but I like to apply a little bit of like a um, like a glowy sort of highlight before I put on my blush and then I put another highlight on top of that which I know sounds like a lot of highlights so you can probably skip this step if you're not that into that look um, but this is the hourglass incandescent strobe lighting powder and I just sort of like to put that on before I put my blush on because I think it just gives that really like lit from within look um, and it just makes that highlight that I apply um, after my blush just like really pop so like I said you can definitely skip this step if you're not into that super glowy look or you're a little bit more oily or whatever and then for blush um, I am gonna go in with the uh, Laura Geller uh, Sunswept blush this is like my favorite blush of all time I absolutely love it it also has a little bit of like a sheen to it, so you can see that's sort of like a trend for me. I really like super glowy products. I think that's just what happens when you have like really, really dry skin. So I'm using a Sigma F40 uh, large angled contour to apply that. And I, when I apply my blush, I used to apply it like really like more circular on the apples of my cheek and something that I found that like really like lifts your face and makes your face look like thinner, I guess, is to sort of apply it backwards, like you're kind of contouring with it too. So that's just what I've been doing for the last year or so. I just love that color. It's really, really nice. It just is like a very natural looking um, like pinky bronze color. And then for highlight, this is one that I kind of like forgot that I had. That's just a sign that you have way too much makeup. Um, but this is the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick in Beige. I feel like no one's talking about these anymore, but they're really good. Um, so I like kind of rediscovered that and I've been using it a lot lately. 
it's this very like pinky, um, like golden, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You can really use any of these colors or you can use all of them, which is what I do. I just sort of swirl it all together. And then just putting that on the high points. And I do sort of like, do like that V shape and I kind of like bring it up underneath my brow. And I put a little bit on my nose, just, just the tip. Oh, and for highlighting, I use the Sigma Tapered Highlighter um, F35 brush. It's like perfect for highlighting. Okay. Okay, now for the eyes. During the week, like when I'm going to work or, you know, just want to do something really quick and easy, I try to just kind of stick to like one or two shadows. Um, and what I do for that is um, I use this Laura Mercier um, caviar stick in copper. I really like like a gold eye pretty much like every day honestly I go for like sort of like a gold all over the lid and then you know depending on if it's like the weekend I'll like smoke it out and do more shadows but for just like an everyday look I kind of just like to put this all over the lid and then I go in with like a brown closer to the lash line um, so you'll see. Okay so I actually went ahead and just did my brows off camera because I don't know if you guys have like one part of your makeup routine that's like this, but I just feel like with brows, I like really have to concentrate because I don't always get them right. <laughs> so I just did those off camera, um, but I used the Anastasia um, brow powder in soft brown and then just used like a little angled brush from Sephora to sort of like just shape them. Um, and kind of fill them in a little bit. And then I set them with the uh, Benefit 3D Brown Tones in, I actually don't know what shade this is. I think it's number two, maybe. I think there's like one and two, and this is like the lighter one. But I just like to do that because my brows are super, super dark. So I feel like that just like, it makes them a little bit warmer, so. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is go in with my shadow. Um, and that is the Laura Mercier, um, caviar stick like I mentioned before in copper so I'm just gonna pop this all over my lid and I'm just gonna be sort of like not that neat with it right now okay I hope I'm in camera sorry guys I don't know if I was even like in the shot um okay. yeah so I just put that all over my lid it's a really pretty gold shadow it's a cream so it's like super super pigmented and then I'm just gonna go in with like the Sigma um, blending E25 yeah and then I'm just gonna really like blend that out and sort of like take it up into the crease since we're not gonna do a crease color I just like to sort of like bring it up a little bit higher sort of just bring the shadow into the crease so it's nice and blended. This is like such an awesome blending brush. So I personally really, really like Sigma brushes. So if you guys are looking for a good like brush company, um, I definitely recommend them. Okay, so now that that's sort of blended, I'm gonna go in with like a darker shadow and I'm just gonna take this dark brown um, from the Tarte In Bloom palette um, and it's the shade uh, Leader. I'm gonna take that on this like flat definer brush and I'm just gonna put that really close to my lash line. And the reason I do this is I feel like it just makes my lashes look really full at the base when I put on um, my mascara. And it also just sort of gives your eyes a little bit more definition without being like too much of an extra step. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do this from far away. Okay, and then I'm just gonna blend. I'm gonna take that E25 blending brush again and just blend that line out so it's not too harsh and sort of just like blend it up. I just feel like that's like a little softer than doing like a winged liner or even like an actual like coal liner pencil or whatever 
and it just looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so now for the bottom lash line, I always, like without fail, pretty much every day, go in with a brown liner on my uh, bottom lash line. So this is the, um, oh gosh, it's like so sharpened down. <laughs> it's from Art and Cian. it's like the Modster liner, and then I think it's in the shade Coffee. It's just whatever the brown shade is. I think they only have like one brown. Um, the other one that is like my absolute favorite, but I need to buy a new one because it's like literally sharpened down to like the very bottom, is um, Max Costa Riche. It's so good. But I just think like if you have like brown or green eyes, this just looks super pretty. I mean, honestly, on any, on any eyes, this would look really pretty. And then I'm just gonna go back in with that Tarte, sorry if this is like blinding you, um, that Tarte in the Bloom palette. I'm just gonna go back in with that leader shade and the flat definer brush and just sort of like press that right up against the lower lash line. No matter like what look I'm doing, I always kind of like a little something smoky going on on the lower lash line. I just think it makes the eyes look really, really pretty and sultry. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take this Sigma pencil brush, it's like the E30, and then just blend that out so there's no harsh lines. And then I'm gonna curl my lashes. And then I like literally never wear false lashes, especially not on like an everyday basis. So I just like to have a really good mascara. Um, the ones that I've been liking, so the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye is my like holy grail. I always have to have it in my collection. It's my absolute favorite. Um, and then the other one I've been trying over the last few months is the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill. They're both a little bit more expensive, but I personally think for mascara, like I love my lashes. I love making my lashes look really long and if you're not like going to be using falsies I think it's kind of like okay to splurge but they do have really good mascaras at the drugstore that I like too like the L'Oreal uh, Voluminous Full Definition, um, the CoverGirl Lash Blast or is that Maybelline? I don't know. The one in the orange tube. I like that one too a lot. So I'm going to go in with the Giordio Armani one today. And I think like probably 95% of the time I get mascara on my lid. And I just leave it because who has time to fix it. Okay, last step um, is gonna be lips. Um, pretty much every day I kind of like switch it up and try a new lip color because you know, I have a pretty large lipstick collection. Which is kind of embarrassing um but anyway uh so i usually really like to go for like more of like a mauve shave or um like a brown brownish mauve like somewhere in that color range because i think that looks best on me i think like light pinks um and like really really nude nudes don't look good when you have like super dark hair and like olive skin tone that's just my opinion or at least you know for my preferences, I don't really like that kind of color. So um, I am using to line my lips today the Kylie Candy K lip liner, which I do really like. It's the only, um, the Candy K lip kit is the only one of the like Kylie lip kits that sort of like struck an interest. I do find this color to be really similar to Max or liner. So if you have that in your collection, you can use that. I don't overline my lips really because obviously I don't really need to so um, and then the next step is the lipstick and I'm gonna use Mac Brave this is like my all-time favorite lipstick color so I figured I should just use my all-time favorite on camera today this is probably the lipstick color that I'm gonna be wearing for our wedding so really love this color it's just like a nice rosy pink Okay, and last step is I'm going to set my makeup with the Urban Decay Chill Makeup Setting Spray.
Okay, so this is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this is definitely a pretty easy look to achieve. If I wasn't filming, I feel like this usually takes like 10 or 15 minutes because, you know, I've done it every day for the last year pretty much. Um, so it's definitely easy for me to kind of whack it on. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for my next one. Have